why would you encourage them to consider leaving Texas to do oh, something man. like what you've done? Someone's got to go to Nineveh, bro. That's why. <laughs> well, howdy, friends, and welcome to the Roundup Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Tidwell, and I have my co-host with me today, Chase Abner. Chase, what's up, man? Hey, Mitch. Good to be here, man. I am uh, very excited to hear from today's guest. He's a hero leaving the, the warm, sunny uh, oh fields God. of Texas uh, to move to the frozen mm. north of <clears throat> Iowa en route uh, to Michigan, Mr. Zach Cunningham. Mr. Zach Cunningham. Hey, Zach, where at in Texas were you originally from? Well, thanks for having me. I am originally yeah. from Honey Grove, Texas, small town in Northeast Texas, but I went to school in Denton, Texas. I would tell people I'm from Dallas. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, so Northeast Texas, so you did have, I was th- for, I don't know why, for some reason I was thinking West Texas, so I was thinking like flat, so I was like, well, you know. Still pretty I know, flat. I forgot. Texas. Yeah, yeah, it is, it actually is still pretty flat up there, but. Anyways, man, we're glad to have you on, dude. We wanted to uh, to bring you on. We know that you were serving in a in a in a pretty good sized ministry here in Denton at Overflow for several years, and then you went up and followed uh, Austin Wadlow to East Lansing. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, to, uh, Ames, Iowa first, and then to East yeah. Lansing. So, gotcha. So you go are the salt co- Yeah, you are the salt company director there. So, man, tell us a little bit about yourself, Zach. How you got to where you're at, and a little bit about your church, man. Yeah, it's, thanks for having me. It's a bit of a whirlwind. Uh, yeah, I'm Zach. I am the Salt Company Director at East Lansing at the Commons Church, uh, which is the name of our new church plant uh, from Texas. Uh, got married three years ago. Just celebrated my three-year anniversary a uh, couple of weeks ago. And amen. so, yeah, man, 26 years old. Uh, my wife, Mally, and I have been married three years, and, man, we're loving East Lansing. So, Did y'all meet in Denton? Yes, and so I went to school at UNT, North Texas, go mean Green Eagles. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah and, and we were, we actually met as student leaders in that ministry that you're talking yeah. about, Overflow. <laughs> and so, yeah, we met and uh, started dating, got engaged, and then uh, pretty much just moved right after getting married. And so we got married, and then 10 days later, moved to Ames, Iowa, of all places. So. Wow. Hey, man. Well, that's a quite a bit. That's a jump. I, I tell you what, I don't see many guys in Texas. And this is, I know, for everyone that's listening that's not from Texas, you're just, you're going to roll your eyes. Just go ahead and roll them. But you just don't see many guys leaving Texas to go somewhere else. So I can't, can't wait to hear about this story, man. Yeah, no yeah. shot. Nobody leaves Texas unless they're called by the <laughs> war to leave. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Zach, I'd love to hear more about just your time in college. What what was that yeah. like as a believer and, and, and becoming sure. a leader in ministry? Yeah, it's a pretty crazy story. I'm like your textbook leadership pipeline product, even though that wasn't the language that was being used back then. Uh, so I go to college, not really chasing after Jesus, but the American dream, man. I was an accounting major, you know, chasing those six figures, trying to get that white picket fence, suburb house, you know, sports car, minivan. And yeah, I was doing that. And then one day, my freshman year, I bump into a guy on campus at UNT who uh, invited me to the college ministry at First Baptist there in Denton. Uh, I ran cross country against him in high school. Anyway, she's like, yo, tonight, come to the worship night. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm a Christian. I do that. And so I go, man, and Austin Wadlow's there. And uh, he's preaching. I think that night he's preaching on predestination. Now, I didn't care really anything about what he was saying. (laughs) But I was but I was like pretty compelled because, you know, there's some 300 students, college students worshiping Jesus, like as if it was actually true. And that was pretty compelling for me. And so I like jump into a small group like that night. Uh, and start serving. I joined the parking team. I go to the Madden tournament like that next weekend and kind of just plug in, man. Early college ministry guy, you know, jumping in. And uh, man, God did a lot through that. Uh, That next year, I jump on the leadership team and lead a small group. And it was there that God was really getting a hold of my heart. Uh, You know, I was chasing the accounting thing. And I mean, thank God. I love accounting. My twin brother's doing accounting currently. Uh, but thankful that God called me out of ministry. And a lot of that, Mitch, came through, which this is kind of a surreal podcast for me, because Mitch, we met when I was in Texas. Yeah. You're that world. And Chase Abner, I met him in Iowa, so he's that world. Uh, it's exciting, man. But when I was in Texas, man, I jumped all the way in. I mean, we went, I went on a mission trip to East Asia, and then I went to Beach Reach for four years in a row. You know, everything that would move you across the pipeline to be a leader, I was there. You know, I worked at Pine Cove. I went to the Send Conference. I did everything you can, man. And just felt like God was calling me to give my life to this. 
it, it gave me, the Bible gave me a better dream than the American dream. Like the reality, the story that mm. Austin and ultimately what God was casting at Overflow, man, just gave me a bigger vision for my life. And so, mm. man, I jump in. Austin hires me to be an intern, which was a crazy decision as a young guy. And then, yeah, I mean, the, the story kind of just picks up from there. Austin leaves. Uh, the Salt Network steals my boss. And I'm like, why is he moving to Iowa of all places? And, uh, you know, he jumps ship. And then I, I helped lead that ministry for a year and a half. Uh, and then long story short, man, he calls me up. I uh, actually meet Mark Vance at Beach Ridge. And he says, hey, you should consider jumping uh, on board. And then Austin calls me and says, hey, you want to, you know, jump in and move to uh, Michigan to plant a church. And I was just, I was engaged at the time, you know, and uh, talked to my wife, my future wife and her parents and, you know, got married and then the journey began. So I know it's a lot, but that's kind of a wild on ramp to where I'm at now. So it's crazy. That's, I, I love hearing more of that story. You know, we lived here in the same city, but I think there are pieces of that that, uh, that I hadn't heard before. So thanks, well, thanks for there, sharing there that. There is a piece missing between Wadlow leaving and Zach going where I tried to insert myself to keep Zach here in Texas. <laughs> in Texas. <laughs> um, but it, it didn't work. So, uh, but hey, it's worked out. So, <laughs> yeah. Mitch, that was actually, those are, those are some great conversations with yeah. you, man. You're super encouraging. So, oh, man, I Zach, that. Zach, you said uh, something like the, the, the Bible gave you a better dream than the American dream. Dream. Yeah. And, and I'm just yeah. thinking about like, man, you had a lot of good reasons maybe to say no uh, to leaving yeah. Texas and doing what you're doing now. You, you know, you were freshly married, had a college degree. You probably could have, you know, made made good bank doing doing accounting or something like that. You could have stayed and let it overflow. You know, whatever. So, so what is that dream? Like, what is it that compelled yeah. you to leave that yeah. comfort and that stability and that script that you had uh, to do what yeah. you're doing now? Oh, man, living for the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus is call on our life to make disciples and not just the general call that all believers have, but specifically for me, college ministry and what God was doing on the college campus. I'll never forget. So Austin comes back from Iowa. He does like a hitchhiker's event. And he's like, Zach, you won't believe what God is doing uh, at the Salt Network. And he starts telling me that they're convincing, you know, freshmen and sophomores to transfer and give two years of their lives, seniors to give two years of their lives to go and help plant churches, all these things. I'm like, no chance. There's no way people are doing it. He's like, no, they are. And the fact that people would give up their lives to go and, and to help start churches and go overseas, man, they were sending hundreds of people overseas. Mm -hmm. That's a better, that's a better thing to live for mm -hmm. than that American dream, you know? And it was scratching a deeper desire than the desire for money and girls at the time. It was my soul, man, and something bigger. And so, dude, it was a wild time, but I'll never forget what God did in college. So it was crazy. Zach, tell us a little bit about, you know, you go, obviously there's that big vision there, um, you know, that Austin, uh, kind of cast to you enough to move you and your newly married wife up to Ames and then to Michigan. Tell us a little bit kind of about the Salt Network and kind of mm -hmm. what, what you do. Like, what what is that for some of our audience that doesn't know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I still feel like an outsider sometimes with the Salt Network because <laughs> I still remember, dude, I still remember hearing it for the first time. And so every time I hear the story, the vision, yeah. it still feels like the first time. Uh, but long story short, this is like the website uh, definition of the Salt Network. It's a, a fa it's a family of multi generational churches with a passion for the next generation. Uh, long story short, man's churches who mm -hmm. love college students, who mm -hmm. put them at the front of the bus, and man, go hard and, and believe that if you can win the campus, you can win the world. You know, it started I think 2010 out of Ames, Iowa, the cornfields that Chase Abner so loves, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, God put it on the heart of a guy like Tori Nesbitt and, and Jack Owens to, to start some college ministries across the network uh, and so or across the country. And so right now, there's probably 18, 20 or so uh, salt companies, uh, college ministries on campuses, uh, all housed in a local church. So church based college ministry at major university centers. And so with a vision of planting churches every year uh, on other university campuses. Mm -hmm. And for, for those who are who are new to to the concept of salt company, um, you know, there's some distinctives, right, that set set mm -hmm. it apart from other types of college ministry. So, what would you say makes a college ministry a salt company in in the salt network? 
Yeah, there, there are certain things that we do across the network that if you go to any salt company, it's going to be pretty similar. Like the language is going to be the same. Some of the events, like for example, uh, each one of our ministries does a midweek gathering. Uh, a lot of college ministries do that, but that's something that we do. Uh, we also have student-led discipleship, primarily through small groups. And so we raise up students to lead those groups. Uh, we've got some other things that we do as well, like some sort of training, Gospel 101, like equipping courses that each salt company is going to do. We have some events that we do uh, by ourselves and then together, the fall retreat, some sort of like like fall event to get people to come to. And then my favorite thing about being in the network is every spring, you know, mine's last year, all of the salt companies come together for a, a huge conference called the Salt Company Conference, Worship Night, Great Teaching, and really casting vision uh, to throw fuel on the fire of church planting. And so, man, it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Zach, what have been some of the biggest differences that you've found now? Because you've been uh, East Lansing, well, you've been gone for three years. How mm -hmm. long have you been to East Lansing now? Two. Two years. Okay. What have been some of like this, the major differences of, hey, leaving the type of ministry you're in at Overflow to go up to be a part of a church planning network? And then not just that, but you're now actually in a whole different context from Bible Belt, Texas to East Lansing, you know, Michigan. What can you, what were the yeah. differences there? Yeah. Well, this is new. You know, in, in Texas, I just, Austin had built such a great, healthy ministry, and I got to help transition it and, and help take over that. Uh, coming here was different, man. Starting something from scratch, that's the first, that's the biggest difference, man. So it was, it was fun. It was challenging. Uh, as far as the differences between Texas and East Lansing, there's probably a lot. But for me as the college pastor, Dude, the, every college campus has so many similarities. Like the mm. context is almost the same. Uh, that might be a great question to ask, like a lead pastor who's reaching the community. But dude, I'm telling you, these are the same 18 to 22 year olds who are wearing lanyards, who are wanting to have a good time, <laughs> who have no clue what they're doing, who want a vision for their life. You know, they yeah. want a, the greatest cause that they can live for. Man, that's going to be the same. It, it feels the same. Now there's differences, man. Like, so when I moved to Iowa and to Michigan, no one had heard of guys like John Piper, Matt Chandler. Like I'm tossing these names out, like books that I've read. They don't, these people don't give a rip about, they don't know who Jonathan Picluda is. You know, they, these guys, uh, man, they, a lot of them haven't even heard the gospel. You know, there's a lot of Catholics up here. There's a lot of other, you know, backgrounds. And so I grew up in the Bible belt, you know, and so for them not to know some of those guys, it was, it was shocking at first. I had to adjust, but when you get down to the grit of what I do, and it's the same, you know, trying to reach these young people. So just to be, I don't know if we've even mentioned, mentioned you're ministering at Michigan State University. That's right, baby. Right. Go green, <laughs> greatest university so, in Michigan, easy. Dude, <laughs> so for some reason, I don't know why, but when I was in middle school, I got on this Michigan kick where, I and I still have these two, like, small helmets, like a Michigan Wolverines and then the Michigan State Spartans helmets. I still have them now. My son plays with them. But I became ultimately a Michigan State fan because of a guy named T.J. Duckett. He's got to be a legend around there. And I think it was in – I probably need to land the plane on this because people are probably tuning out of the podcast right now. <laughs> but this is like my Michigan State memory. Uh, but it was this epic win against Michigan State, T.J. Duckett. He went on to play with the Falcons. But anyways, I'm a big Michigan State fan. So uh, how, how big – tell us a little bit about that campus. What is that – What's the size of that? It's public school. It's a public uh, or a state school. Yeah, yeah. There's man, Michigan State, beautiful campus here in the central uh, Michigan area. 50,000 students, um, you know, lots of wow. international students. Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID, it's like 8,000 international students, primarily Chinese. Uh, and so huge sports school, you know, tons of uh, school spirit, which is totally different for me from UNT. Okay. Not yeah. that North Texas doesn't love North Texas, but let's be real. This is a different university experience. Yeah. Uh, but man, it's, it's great. One of one, uh, one thing a lot of people don't know about East Lansing is there's actually a community college right down the road in Lansing, uh, LCC that has almost 20,000 students. And so wow. across the board, man, in, in the greater La Lansing Metro, you know, give or take 65, 70,000 college students and so wow. yeah it's crazy man man twenty thousand. what's uh what would you say uh distinguishes the michigan state 
community from like University of Michigan and Ann Arbor. Like, you know, I'm thinking about here in Iowa, you got the, you got the University of Iowa vibe and then you got the Iowa State vibe. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. help us get a sense of just culturally what, what the feel yeah. is on campus. Yeah, I might get in trouble for saying this. Uh, it's <laughs> That's so, what I want. So, That's actually why I'm asking the question. <laughs> I get, I get paid. I get paid to be a Michigan State fan, dude. Love Michigan State. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. A lot of our students applied to Michigan and didn't get in. Like, that's just across the board. <laughs> Michigan is like, it's not Ivy League, but like, it's Ivy League. You know, you've got to have like a 4.0 to get in. Super academic. The, the, like the town, Ann Arbor, man, I was actually excited when Austin called me and said, Zach, we're going to go plant in Michigan. I thought he meant like wolverines bro and i was an x-man fan growing up wolverine was my guy you know i was super excited um it's so i'm researching ann arbor it's like top college town in america next to denton texas um but then he calls me back right he calls me back and he says no no no, no. we're not planting michigan we're planting michigan state and here's why and he had an incredible reason because michigan state's in the middle of michigan and 80 percent of the students who go to michigan state are from michigan and, and that means most of them are actually going to stay in Michigan. They're going to get jobs in Mount Pleasant, Grand Rapids. Most of the students who go to Michigan are not, uh, well, at least not all, not 80 percent, don't aren't, aren't Michigan uh, people. And so they they're going to go and move and do all those things. And so it was strategic for us as the first church plant in Michigan to try to get in the middle and to try to get as many Michiganders as possible to help fuel future church planting. Michiganders didn't that's that's what it's officially called. Isn't that so weird? Yeah, I had no Michiganites. No, Michiganders. <laughs> Crazy okay. man. Interesting. Interesting. Well, speaking of the the Michiganders, man, uh, how how are you going to reach them? Like, what's this fall going to look like for you guys? You know, a lot of things mm. have changed uh, in the world on campuses, but uh, just kind of give us the principles that guide your your salt company ministry for the fall. Yeah, yeah. Well, fingers across that it's more of a uh, open uh, fall. You know, with with COVID last year was different, but man, we are going to do our best. So we're about it's August tenth. We're recording this in two weeks. Our leaders come back to town, and so we'll have uh, a, like a leader retreat. We've got thirty five leaders that for two days, man, we're going to try to pump as much vision for their campus as much like strategy and culture into them as possible to leverage them on campus, to help see themselves as missionaries to that campus. And then, man, for those next three weeks, we're gonna go as hard as we can uh, to reach, uh, not just freshmen this year, but actually sophomores as well, man. Uh, Michigan State did not allow sophomores to come to campus, uh, most of them. And so we have two freshman classes, if you will, coming. And so, dude, that's upwards nice. of 15,000 people who've never stepped foot on campus. Wow. And so this year, you know, against all years, it's probably one of the biggest years to, to actually go all out. So uh, we'll, we'll bring our leaders in and we'll try to cast a wide net uh, as far as doing different events, you know, different parties that first, you know, week, just trying to get students to know who we are and build relationships and teach our students to make friends fast and then try to get them to come out the gospel so yeah well i heard a few principles at work there one i heard you invest a lot of the mission into the students it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not zach or or paid professionals it's no we we deposit the vision and the strategy in the students and then let them go hardest of all and secondly i heard you say a principle or, or you know kind of guiding what you said was uh um people who are new to campus are your prime mm -hmm your prime audience for your, those activities in the first few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We, I know like there's some stat about, you know, freshmen who grew up in church. They don't, if they don't get plugged in the first three weeks, like 70% fall out. So we'll go hard, man. Those, those first three weeks are very important in a college career. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got a puppy, my wife and I, uh, his name is Moose. He's a Jack Russell. And uh, you know, I'm researching all about how to raise a puppy because I know, that in those first few weeks of having a puppy, it's really sets like the rhythm of who they are. And so you give them a lot of treats, man, they're going to be treat motivated. If you let them sleep in your bed, they're going to sleep in your bed because those first three weeks of having a puppy is going to set the course. Man, it's the same thing with freshmen. You know, those first three weeks, what you do in those first three weeks, what you invest, what habits you start, that's going to carry you not just as a senior man, but the rest of your life. So we go, you know, very hard during those first three weeks to reach a man because we try to pull them in 
uh, Zach, you mentioned uh, parties and things like that. Can we kind of let's uh, get down to the weeds just a little bit of like what does that look like? Are you just telling like mm-hmm. a couple of your leaders, hey, open up your home, throw a party? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. So if our leader retreat is a Thursday night, like it ends on Thursday night, we've got a week because our midweeks on Thursday uh, of when students move in uh, to when our first gathering is. And so we have as a staff intentionally plan certain things that our students have like told us would be a good idea and then also we leave some things open for our students to kind of get creative and so at that retreat we're going to try to help them see the next seven days as a mission trip okay we'll call it mission trip to campus or each week you know we're going on a trip to that campus except you don't have to leave the country you just gotta leave your dorm room Mm -hmm. and so yeah man so we'll do that first weekend uh, different things like the students will do volleyball on campus. Michigan State's a big campus, so we'll split them up in the teams. You know, we'll go to each side of campus and play volleyball. We'll play spike ball. Uh, we we try to throw a couple large group events um, for the sake of just getting people there and, and, and gathering traction. And so we'll have a pancake party uh, at a house near campus where we just try to make as many pancakes as possible and have a good time. Uh, we'll do a, like a like a scavenger hunt on campus that we call a Sasquatch hunt. There's a lot behind that, but we pretty much just dress a guy up as a Sasquatch and try to find him on campus. And <laughs> we'll you know we'll feed him food after that. And and the rest of that week, other than those big events, it's really just our students on campus. Man, they'll go to the dorms. They're trying to reach people, get contacts, and and just make friends fast. You know, think about how you made a friend in college and try to do that that first week with new people and. Uh, you know, we, we really encourage them, reach the people you once were, you mm-hmm. know, whether it's, you know, you're a party animal or you're the sports guy, like go find where freshman Matt or freshman Amanda hung out and man, go hang out and, and try to share the gospel with them. So mm-hmm. that's good. That's good. So as you move, you know, beyond kickoff season, you know, for, for the, for the semester, <laughs> kind of what is the, the rhythm, you know, when does that change and what does the rhythm mm-hmm. look like for you guys? Or what do you anticipate maybe uh, coming in uh, to this fall semester? Yeah, man, once we get kicked off, you know, our hope is to start those small groups. And so at our kickoff, really the goal is to cast a wide net to get them into these small groups that are going to meet every week. Uh, Student-led groups on campus and off campus. Uh, led by our leaders, you know, every week. And uh, they'll talk about the sermon that we teach on Thursday night. And so we're trying to get people to come back. We're going to teach the Sermon on the Mount this fall. I'm excited for it. Uh, And then one of the vision pieces we have is how do we get these freshmen and freshmores or sophomores, whatever you want to call them, uh, to our fall retreat? It's like an early October thing, Mm -hmm. man. It's where we go to a retreat. We teach the Bible. We have fun, you know. And I heard Mark Vance say this when I was in Iowa. He said this that if you can get a bunch of 18 year olds to travel two hours to a retreat and stay overnight to listen to the bible you got them like they're part Mm. i mean they're gonna stick you know and so that's our hope how can we get freshmen to the fall retreat we'll discount it you know we'll make some video that makes them excited to come but our hope really is to get them to come and, and be part of the community that they'll find and hopefully be changed by jesus and so zach if you could kind of you know, wave a magic wand and, and have the perfect 2021, 22 year, uh, this year, man, what does that look like for you at the salt mm-hmm. company there at, uh, the commons? Yeah. You know, we haven't had a year yet here at Michigan state that hasn't been affected by COVID, yeah. uh, year one, March, it came. And then last year it was different and I'm not naive. I don't know what's going to happen this next year with the virus, but if, if we could just have a year, where our new student leaders who led for us last year could lead somewhat of a normal small group and grow in that way and invest in people and make disciples. And by the end of the year, not to have like a full auditorium and lose the campus, but actually to like double our leadership team. Like that's a goal that our staff is tossing around. Like what's it gonna take for us to take 34 and make 68 disciple makers by the end of the year? Like that's pretty basic but that's honestly if i had that mitch like if at the end of 2021 Mm. we were able to pull that off i mean that would be more than i would ever dream or hope for well yeah talk more about that zach like what are the what are the levers that you're pulling if you will you know you talked about kickoff just Mm -hmm. getting the contacts getting people exposed to the gospel and to salt company Mm -hmm. to the church you talked about the fall retreat that kind of helps cement that relationship and their identity with uh with salt and and as a believer like 
what what else do you do to help move them beyond that stage to, to saying, yeah, I'm willing to, to be a leader and commit the time and effort and energy that it takes uh, to serve uh, the church in that way? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly the fall retreat is like the first kind of like, like area that we try to push students to come because so many of our leaders uh, actually have, have been to that fall retreat, man. There's just something about going and finding community there. And then throughout that, man, we're trying to get them into some sort of equipping class where they're learning some basic doctrine, how to study the Bible, how to pray, how to memorize scripture. Uh, we're trying to get them to come to the conference and have a big vision casted for their life. You know, We're trying to get them into small discipleship groups where they're meeting regularly to confess sin and read the Bible and and then we're trying to shepherd them well. You know, we do have an interview process, like a lot of college ministers have, you know, like apply to be a leader. And, and through that, man, that's even another time for us to get to know them as staff and to interview them, sometimes to share the gospel and have people put their faith in Jesus at those things. And so, yeah, those are some of the benchmarks that I'm thinking through. You know, we have overseas trips uh, that, you know, each year we're trying to send teams overseas that, man, when people go overseas and live their life in a different mm-hmm. country, they come back on fire for the, for the campus. And so man, that's another, that's another place I'm trying to get people to go. Yeah. The past two years, I've had a team ready to go overseas and, you know, obviously they couldn't go, but we'll see about next year. Yeah, mm-hmm. Man, Zach, I want to transition for just a second here and think through, you know, being a guy in Texas, newly married, um, going up to plant and it doesn't really turn out anything like you had thought because of COVID stuff, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I want to think, I'm thinking of the person now that is maybe has a burden to be called to be sent, whether that's a plant, be a part of a plant or something like that. Like, what are some ways to prepare? I want, two things here. What are some ways like to maybe prepare yourself to do that? Or maybe is there some boxes to check before you go jumping mm-hmm. off and do that? And then two, like, how has that, um, affected your marriage how's that affect your relationship with your wife and how have you navigated yeah. that so there was about there there's a lot of uh question a lot of information and everything i just shared with you <laughs> why don't you try yeah. to answer that <laughs> yeah so if i could think back you know three years you know i'm sitting in texas and i'm getting this like call to go like what prepared yeah. me and what played itself in I, first of all, if they're a college student, I'd say, man, find a church that loves sending. They don't have to have a college ministry per se. Obviously, we value the next generation, but man, find a church that values sending. Like you can see that they've sent people overseas or their church planting and get around those types of people. And then, you know, express to your leaders like, hey, this is something that God might be calling me to do. And dude, I think another thing is just listen to stories of people who've gone or read biographies of people who've gone overseas you know that's that's one thing to encourage your faith man hear stories of the way that some of these salt guys are getting sent out or um, some of these missionaries that go overseas you know find some old christian biographies start reading them man uh read some really good books you know that's that's one thing god used in my life you know i read don't waste your life by john piper i read radical you know i read master plan of evangelism and i was i was getting in my heart a burden for the lost you know, and then just realize that God has called you uh, to be a disciple maker somewhere. Now, it may be uh, back at home, wherever you're at. Uh, but I have seen that God has used sending and leaving kind of home as a way to stretch my faith. Like it's a blessing to go somewhere else and depend on the Lord to do those things. Everyone's called to go. I love there's this old uh, there's this a quote from Hudson Taylor, and this is more of a missionary quote, but God used it to wreck my life. He said, so many people are wondering, man, do I have a special call to go, like to leave where I'm at and go? And he said this, he said, dude, with the facts laid before you and the call from Jesus to go and make disciples of all nations, you better find out if you've got a special call to stay. And dude, that, that idea, which I think is so biblical, oh, dude, if that can get your heart, yeah, your, your feet will move as well. And so, and those are some of the things that I would say pushed me uh, to go and, and to do this. As far as how it affected my marriage, my wife is a trooper, man. So first of all, this I left this part out of the story. She was actually in nursing school uh, when we got the call to leave and to uproot our lives to go to Iowa and then to, to Michigan. And I, so I told her, I was like, hey, so I I, we, you know, we have this call, but we're not going, you know, you're in nursing school. This isn't God's call on our life. And she looks at me dead in the eyes and says, 
what are you talking about? We're going. And so she <laughs> drops out. Dude, she drops out of she drops out of nursing school. And, and so we moved to Iowa. And she didn't have a job. You know, my job was secure. But she, she gets a job at a coffee shop in Ames, Iowa, Bergie's Coffee Shop. And she's selfless, man. She's serving where she's at. And and I'll tell you this, man. Iowa was difficult. You know, that, that little 10-month stint in Iowa, making friends that you knew you were going to have to leave. That's a hard mm-hmm. paradigm to, mm-hmm. to go through. Um, but when we got to East Lansing, man, that was such a sweet time for us to kind of uh, put a little bit of roots down, you know, and I say that cautiously. Um, yeah. But dude, it, I mean, it has made my wife and I more dependent on the Lord. You know, we left 10 days after our wedding and we weren't right down the door for mom and dad. Man. We, <laughs> wow. we were eight, we were 11 hours up the road in Iowa. We couldn't run home to mom and dad and we got to fight. No, it forced us to, um, you know, yeah. do a little conflict resolution and grow. And man, we have just seen, god do so many things in our life you know we feel like we have a front row seat to what god's doing and we just eat popcorn man and and so i would just say it's it's a blessing you know it's hard as all get out but dude i i would not if i could go back i wouldn't change a thing yeah yeah Yeah. i appreciate the shout out to burgie's coffee you know that's my you know that's my jam zach Uh, (laughs) every time every time i go there i see you there in iowa Hey, that's yeah. not the one in the gas station, is it? Oh yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Well, there, okay. there's one in the gas station. There's one in the in the hospital. Yeah. Now there's one on the north side of town. Zach, come back. Yeah, I'll treat right. you, man. I'll okay, treat bro. you. That's a good coffee shop. I had uh, when I stayed at a salt at a hitchhiker's Troy's uh, mm-hmm. son. Uh, I stayed with him and his his wife. And uh, anyways, he took me there each morning. He would take me there to eat coffee. It's good coffee. I I just had a cup of from the roastery windmill coffee. So hopefully they can sponsor the podcast. Look, uh, also uh, (laughs) before I ask another question, I just wanted to shout out this uh, story uh, about Mally. Uh, um, Yeah, I remember being in a baptism service and and a guy getting baptized who confessed he was a former atheist, came to Christ, and it was because Mal shared Christ with him while working at the coffee Mm -hmm. shop. So just uh, celebrate your wife, man, and uh, want to honor her and her contribution to the mission here in Ames. She's here for 10 10 months, but it didn't matter. Like, she was on mission for those 10 months, and um, certainly worth uh, celebrating. That's right. I'll keep my coverage. All right. All right. So let me talk about Mitch Tidwell now. So uh, (laughs) one of the reasons I say yes to uh, to co-hosting a podcast with Mitch, sponsored by the Southern Baptist of Texas, is because as all right, Mitch loves Texas, right? I, I was with him. Uh, when was I with you? In May, and he took me to the store. He talked it up, and and he's like, "Oh, this is very special." And we roll in, and it's just a bunch of stuff celebrating Texas. I'm like, "Okay," <laughs> but honestly, it was cool. He got me a shirt, a dope Fort Worth shirt um, that I can't wait to to bust out when Dude, it's long sleeve weather. Right. That uh, is the most Texas thing. Hey, I'm gonna buy you a gift, and I'm gonna buy you a gift of a state that's not your state. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> So, but but here's the point. Like as much as Mitch loves Texas, um, he he wants people to go where God sends them. And so mm-hmm. knowing that a lot of people in this audience are folks who are you know volunteer or staff leaders in college ministries around the great state of Texas, Zach, um, why would you encourage them to consider leaving Texas to do oh, something man. like what you've done? Someone's got to go to Nineveh, bro. That's why. <laughs> no, I. Dude, I, by the way, my wife and I love Texas, dude. We grew up there. We got friends and family there. The weather's great. Okay, no state income tax. Um, yeah. But but I'd say this, man. Uh, the the church per capita, you know, in Dallas, at least where I'm from, there's a mega church on every corner, man. They're preaching the Bible. Like, there's a lot of churches that you would pray, man, I hope my son, like, goes to that church. Uh, this is not a rag on the churches in East Lansing. There's not a whole lot of churches who are Bible believing, Bible teaching, you know, Jesus centered churches, man. And mm-hmm. that's at least the context here. You know, I know Iowa's got uh, a, a number of churches and different, but up north, man, it's just different. And so if, if you feel called to help make an impact and make another option for a future kid to go to a church that teaches Jesus and loves the Bible, like that's one thing, man. That was compelling for me. Uh, I thought Texas was reached. Uh, by a lot now certainly there's people need to stay and continue to spread the gospel but yeah man that's that's the thing that got me man not a lot i mean there's there's a lot of churches man but not a lot of them teaching the bible yeah man that's good that's good thank you well zach we appreciate you being on man this has been so good to catch up with you can't wait to see honestly man just Mm -hmm. uh you know hopefully eventually at some point covid will get out of here there can be a little bit more normalcy and and to see both you and Austin, know both of you guys are very 
gifted and anointed men of, of the Lord uh, doing awesome things. And so just can't wait to see what the Lord does in East, East Lansing through you guys. And, and who knows, maybe you guys need to plant a church and it may end up back down south. You, you really <laughs> never know. I'll tell you Austin. I'll tell Austin. <laughs> you never know. So, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, see, that's what happened, man. Once Salt Company started taking Texas's best, man, we just had to shut down the borders. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> so... All right, we'll end Too on that soon. note. Zach, thanks for being on today, man. We really enjoyed yeah. you, and, and uh, we look forward to keeping up with you, man. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. Thanks All for right. having me. All right, we'll see you, man.